Like it. Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. Sharif don't like it. Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. Well, never mind the Sharif not liking the Casbah. This 2015 movie, Rock the Casbah, did anything but rock. In fact, I thought it was patronizing and just downright plain offensive. This is the worst kind of piece of shit of a movie that I have ever seen in such a long freaking time. Now that I got that out of my system, I would like to say uh, sorry about that, that long going angry rant, but I gotta tell you something. This piece of shit of a movie, Rock the Casbah, is probably like one of the worst movies that I have seen in such a long, long time. But nonetheless, hello everyone. Welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Kirat Writer, and this week we're gonna be taking a look at this abortion of a movie called Rock the Casbah. It's a comedy movie that runs for one hour and 46 minutes long. It is directed by Barry Levinson, uh, it is uh, produced by, what's his name here, Steve Bing, Bill Block, and Jacob Pechenik. Uh The script was written by Mitch Glazer. Uh, the score was done by Marcelo Zevros, the cinematography by Sean Bobbitt, and the editing was done by Aaron Yanes. And it's a shame that such great talent it performers were badly wasted here it, it hurts me to say this so let me get right on to it all right we got bill murray we got kate hudson we got liam lubani we have zoe Deschanel. i'll try to be a little bit calmer if i could try to, to keep my composure in we got uh, we got danny mcbride we got scott con we got arian Mo moed and we got a very very Badly wasted performance from Bruce Willis. These are actually normally guys I like. But there's really nothing to like about this movie. So here we have the almighty white patriarch Bill Murray is ready to correct people in their foreign lands because if it's not the American way, then it's the wrong way. This makes Rock the Casbah neither woken nor progressive, but offensive and fucking tone deaf. Bill Murray here stars as Richie Lenz, who's a conniving has-been music agent from Los Angeles. He's always on the lookout for new talent and rising stars, even though he's generally just past his prime. Murray, just go back to your... your depressing uh curmudgeon elderly individual type movies your days of being you know the hip sarcastic sardonic type roles that you have done in the 80s and 90s well that should be all put to the past if you're trying to make a comeback seriously my friend don't you're pretty good just the way you are now don't try to redeem yourself from the 80s. I'm sorry to say. So he cons a no-talent wannabe singer into having him pay him up front, even though she has a snowballed chance in a microwave to ever be a successful singer. Following him on his journey is his assistant girlfriend, Ronnie, played by Zoe Deschanel, who has been gracious enough to work with him in hopes that her singing career could come into fruition. So then he books her on a USO tour all the way in the country of Afghanistan, well, the capital city, Kabul, to be precise. And he wants her to sing her heart out to the American troops. Now, not to try to sound Islamophobic here, but she, but due to the fact that this country is, you know, 
I guess it was still at the time, it may even still be war torn. She ends up fearing the country, uh, Islamophobia, anyone. She bails out on him in addition to stealing his wallet and his passports, leaving him in the lurch, only just to never see her again. Thank you, Zoe de Chanel. Pick up your che paycheck and get the hell out. That's kind of like what her kind of role was in this crap of fest of a movie. But, in spite of all that, being the fact that he's now stuck in a foreign country, has he, has his manipulative scheming ways changed? <laughs> Hell no. Not in the least. In fact, his predatory ways flourish as he tries to con a talented young Afghan girl named Salima, played by Liam Lubani, who has a voice of an angel. So he tries to get her to audition for, you know, almost like a talent show, very similar to American Idol, called Afghan Star, the Afghanistan's version of American Idol, but only one major problem. Women are forbidden from singing, and she could end up bringing some shame from her family if she auditioned. Not only that, She's also going to eventually be uh, issued with severe threats, uh, which, I mean, not just, not, not, I mean, I mean, death threats, actually. But she does take upon it. I mean, if there's actually a saving grace in this movie, and that would have to probably be Liam Lubani's character. Of Salima because of the fact that she actually has some talent to boot. She does sing like an angel. She's got a great singing voice. But the reason why she has to remain like in solitude and discord is because of the fear of the severe backlash that she's going to get from not only her family but death threats from this um, from this country. Because, you know, it, this country, the country that she's in is heavily dependent on misogyny and, and, and there are just some customs and some things that, and some laws that apply to this country that don't necessarily apply to the United States. Now look, I, I know I'm I'm not in a bad mood in any way, shape, or form, just to let people know on this. But this movie just really, really made my blood boil. And that's not something that doesn't happen very often. Listen, I have always been a big fan of Bill Murray. And even though he doesn't always play likable characters, he has succeeded over the years, adding charm and comedy to his level and his roles giving them a spin with some sympathy to go along. Is that, yeah, he plays flawed characters, and he plays them very well. A lot of his characters are not always, at times, likable. But he still succeeds in, in investing into his audience. Sadly, in Rock the Casbah, Richie Lenz lacks in charm or even in some way, shape, or form, likability. But the fault does not really necessarily come from Bill Murray himself. I'm not just entirely blaming him, but I also have to blame the whole thing on the script writer, Mitch Glazer. Sure, they seem to heavily support patriarchy by having Lenz painted as a white savior as he selfishly patronizes these countrymen as their way is the wrong way, and in an unnatural way, they listen to him. Since when do people in Afghanistan will listen to just one token American and, and have him tell them how to apply to their rules? And speaking of Glazer, his script was actually inspired by a 2009 documentary, Afghan Star, about a real woman who appeared on that show 
back in 2005 and bravely broke barriers, much to the chagrin of the fans and the conservative Muslims who have given her death threats and evicted her from her apartment. What Glazer and, Bear, and director Barry Levinson don't know was that there have been in the past where women have auditioned for Afghan Star since its first airing back in 2005. So their arguments made about this movie is not completely justified. This is all just a ploy to make Lens this holier-than-thou savior who can save humanity from defying their rules and regulations just so he can make a fortune off of this girl's angelic voice. This is blackmail to its worst. So over the past few years, Afghan women have actually made efforts to overcome the hurdles regarding bigotry and sexism in their country. And they never really had to depend on a guy like Lance to help them in their quests. But for the sake of entertainment manipulation, they inject a caricature like Lance to be the patron saint for the greater good, which I say with the best of sarcasm. I, I can play sarcasm just as effectively as you could, Bill Murray. Salima depicted here was not as a character, but the focal piece for Lance to speak out on moral justices in a country he doesn't even live in. He's not even an ambassador. He's just a washed up, has been music agent. He's a little man in a big country. So who is he to judge what's right and what's wrong? So if you want to under, understand the fundamentals of being tone deaf, look no forward. This movie wrote the book on it. And aside from that, the acting too was also very, very deeply cliched but I am not going to put entirely the blame on them since their roles are practically inferior and insignificant. I'm talking about the cliched moronic weapons dealers played by Scott Kahn and Danny McBride. And of course, the prostitute with the loving, caring nature played by Kate Hudson. All very badly drawn cliches who just aren't the ones to blame as to why this film sucked the wild goose egg. They're the examples of how Americans regard themselves as they're always in the right, when in reality, it's not all entirely true. Love you too, Mom. All we have here is Americans trying to just one-up each other which is, to me, in my honest opinion, and you could agree with me, you could disagree with me, that's fine. I'm, I'm all for that. I'm, I'm not trying to be self-righteous here. It's just that this movie was so cringeworthingly angersome. I just got to let it out of my system. You know, in the next, in the next uh, YouTube upload, of what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and be a little more calmer, but I just can't be calm in a movie of this magnitude. I'm sorry to say but all we see here are just Americans trying to one-up each other, which is borderline on self-righteous, greedy, and, and, and just patronizing. That's all that is in this movie. The movie is so convoluted in its patriarchy, it's hard to be taken seriously. Hollywood needs to stop catering to American values and further examine the bigger picture by adding realism instead of phony American partisanship. It's a shameful movie to see. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, and for that, I give this movie, Rock the Casbah, an F. A 1 out of 10. Oh, I thought I would just let this out of my system. I mean, I never felt this angry at a movie since that god-awful Batman and Robin movie. And yes, I promise you in the next movie review that I'm going to do, I'm going to be a lot calmer.
But this movie just, oh, I'm really, really made my blood boil. And it's not often that I give movies an F. But this one deserves an F. Maybe a double F. Anyways, I'm gonna try and do another movie review, and I'm and I'm gonna really, really try and be a little more calmer. If I sounded abrupt or or angry or upset, it's not really at anybody in particular. But sometimes, yes, I will get emotional when I see certain movies that 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 don't sit very well with me. This one just didn't. And if I sounded angry, pissed off, and all that, it's not at anybody in particular. I'm not lashing it out at anyone. And I'm sorry if you all sort of felt a little provoked. But this movie just really was bad. And the thing is, is I, I do, and I, listen, I do love you, Bill Murray. You're a great actor, and you know, you've done very well for yourself in the past 40 plus years. But I don't know what got into your head when you wanted to be in this movie. And maybe you probably just needed the money. Because that's the only thing that I could think of. Barry Levinson, you know, he's been around a long, long time. And as much as I have a lot of respect for his other movies, this is something that was just not, not one of his finest moments either. So when all said and done, I highly recommend that you stay away from this movie and find better things to do with your time. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, please go right ahead. And sorry for the for the for the outburst. But still try to follow the three simple rules. Be kind, be courteous. And don't be rude. You know, we'll be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Hardwriter saying keep watching those movies and I'll see you around. Goodbye.